History of the Circle. It is a truth universally acknowledged that nothing is more successful at inspiring a person to mischief as being told not to do something. Unfortunately, the Chantry of the Divine Age has some trouble with obvious truths. Although it did not outlaw magic, quite the contrary, as the Chantry relied upon magic to kindle the internal flame which burns in every brazier in every Chantry, it relegates magic to lighting candles and lamps, perhaps occasional dusting of rafters and eaves. I will give my readers a moment to contemplate how well such a role satisfied the mages of the time. It surprised absolutely no one when the mages of Valrayo, in protest, snuffed the sacred flames of the cathedral and barricade themselves inside the choir loft. No one, that is, but Divine Ambrosia II, who was outraged and attempted to order an exalted march upon her own cathedral. Even her most devout Templars discouraged the idea. For 21 days, the fires remained unlit while negotiations were conducted. Legend tells us by shouting back and forth from the loft. The mages went cheerily into exile in a remote fortress outside of the capital, where they would be kept under the watchful eye of the Templars and a council of their own elder magi. Outside of normal society and outside of the Chantry, the mages would form their own closed society, the Circle, separated for the first time in human history. From Of Fires, Circles, and Templars, A History of Magic in the Chantry, by Sister Patrine, Chantry Scholar.